we're going to be starting a new chapter involving ratios and proportions and percents. And to start this chapter, we're going to take a look at some basic definitions of ratios and computing some ratios. Uh, ratios are basically fractions. Um, they often have labels. Um, they could be rates, such as miles per gallon or feet per minute. Um, if we want to compare two numbers, though, the ratios need to have the same uh, units. And we'll talk about this in a, in a moment. Um, the ratio can be written one of three ways. It can be written as a quotient with a division sign, or as a fraction, or as a ratio with a colon. Uh, and if you see the colon here, uh, we would say 8 to 5, uh, TO for 2 there. Um, let's take a look at some common units. Um, you've seen several of these before, like converting feet to inches and yards to feet. Uh, this might be helpful in some of the problems that we're going to be taking a look at. So let's begin by converting uh, 3 hours to minutes so that we can compare 3 hours to 12 minutes. I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour, so 3 hours would be 180 minutes. And then since the units are the same, I can compare 180 minutes to 12 minutes and write this as a reduced ratio, ratio in lowest terms. Lowest terms means the numbers have no common factors and each number is a whole number. So there's no uh, decimals like a 1.5 or, or something like that. Um, so the units cancel and 180 to 12 reduces to 15 to 1. And you could write that either as a fraction 15 over 1 or you can write it as 15 and then the colon and then a 1. Let's take a look at this second example here uh, comparing 8 inches to 4 feet. Um, I'm going to change the 4 feet to inches. I know that in every foot there are 12 inches so 4 feet would be 48 inches. And then since my units are the same, I can compare these two quantities. Um, I know that 48 inches is six times longer than eight inches. Um, so we can reduce this eight inches to 48 inches to a ratio of one to six. All right, let's take a look at the next example here that involves pounds and ounces. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the conversion for pounds and ounces because you might not remember that one. Uh, we know that there is 16 ounces in one pound. That's going to come in handy to solve this next problem. So here I see that we've got two pounds and we're comparing that to four ounces. I know there's 16 ounces in one pound. So in two pounds we'd have 32 ounces. And then comparing 32 ounces with four ounces I know that 32 ounces is 8 times larger than 4 ounces, so when I reduce this ratio, this becomes a ratio of 8 to 1. And once again, you can either write that as a fraction or with a colon. Alright, let's take a look at this last example that we have on this page, comparing 5 meters to 20 centimeters. Just a quick review. Uh, we know that there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter. So we've got 5 meters compared to 20 centimeters. I'll change the 5 meters to centimeters. In 1 meter, we have 500 centimeters. So in 5 meters, we have 500 centimeters. So the ratio I have is 500 centimeters to 20 centimeters. And once again, I can reduce. I know that uh, 20 goes into 500, uh, a total of a total of uh, 25 times. So this is a ratio of 25 to 1. And you can write that as either a fraction or with the colon. All right, let's take a look at some other examples. Um, these uh, you probably don't actually have to do a whole lot of work. For these, uh, as long as you can remember some of the basic uh, unit conversions. So we know that there's 100 centimeters in one meter, so that means 200 centimeters would be two meters. 
um, for this one we know that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer so 6 kilometers would be the same as 6,000 meters. Um, the next one, um, working with grams and milligrams, we know that 1 gram is the same as 1,000 milligrams, so 3 grams would be 3,000 milligrams. So something like this should be very easy for you to, to convert. Um, quarts and gallons, you might not be as familiar with that particular conversion. There are four quarts in, in one gallon, so eight quarts would be the equivalent of two gallons. Uh, converting pints in quarts, there's two pints in one quart, so if we have six pints, that's the equivalent of three quarts. And then last but not least, this is probably an easier one for you to remember, you know there's three feet in a yard, so 18 feet would be the equivalent of six yards. All right, let's finish up by taking a look at two other examples here. Um, we want to compare the, the weight of a marble with the weight of a bowling ball. Bowling ball. Obviously a bowling ball is a lot heavier than a marble. Um, I'm going to change uh, kilograms into grams. And I'm going to recall that there was 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So the comparison that I need to do here, if I'm, if I'm going to compare the weight of the marble with the weight of the bowling ball, I need to change the kilograms into grams. So one kilogram is 1,000 grams. 30 kilograms is going to be 30,000 grams. And now that I've changed these both to the same units, I can compare them. So I'll cancel our units and 20 over 30,000 can divide both the numerator and denominator by 10, divide both the numerator and denominator by 2, we end up with 1 over 1,500. So a bowling ball is 1,500 times heavier than a marble. And notice we have no units here. Um, the ratio is just 1 to 1,500. And for this last example, we want to calculate a ratio of wins to losses for a team that's played 42 games and has 24 wins. Uh, first, we want to make sure we take a note that we're comparing wins to losses, not total games to wins. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, how many did they actually lose? Well, if they won 24 of the 42 games, that means they lost 18. So the ratio that we're going to have to write is 24 to 18. And that's not in lowest terms. I can divide both 24 and 18 by 6. So my final ratio would be 4 to 3. So for every 4 games they won, they lost 3 games. Don't forget to do the survey at tinyurl.